Chapter 13 Robin Seeks the Friar Next morning, Robin put on a fine steel coat of chainmail and covered it with a jacket of Lincoln green. His steel cap was hidden by one of white leather with a cock's plume. The great bluish blade of his sword was marked all over with strange figures of dragons and winged women and what not. Dressed this way, he and Little John, Will Scarlet, David of Doncaster, and Arthur of Bland set forth, leaving Will Stutely to be chief while Robin was gone. They strode along, mile after mile. Will Scarlet led, for he knew the way better than the others. In the hot silence of midday, they came to the banks of a wide, grassy, glassy stream. Swallows flew around them and over the water's surface, and gay dragonflies darted here and there, glistening in the sun. Now, good uncle, said Will Scarlet, after they had walked for a long time beside this sweet, bright river. Just beyond the bend before us is a shallow place to cross. On the other side of the stream lives the Friar of Fountain Dale. Robin asked his yeoman to wait, for he wanted to go on this adventure alone. Little John grumbled at this, but the men sat down. Robin turned and left them. He had walked just out of sight of his men when he stopped, for he thought he heard voices. Words seemed to pass between two men, but the voices were almost identical. Curious, Robin walked softly to the river. He lay down on the grass and peered over the edge. All was cool and shady beneath the bank. There sat a friar with shoulders as broad as little John's, merry gray eyes and a curly black beard. He was eating a meat and onion pie and talking to himself, then answering himself as if he were another man. Robin lay watching the friar, and when the friar began to sing, Robin joined in merrily. Then he leapt down the bank to where the friar sat. "'Do you know this country, good and holy man?' asked Robin, laughing. "'Yes, a bit,' said the friar. Do you know a spot called Fountain Abbey? Yes. Do you know the friar of the abbey? Yes, a, a bit, came the answer. Now Robin did not like the idea of getting his pretty clothes wet by crossing the river, so he asked the strong friar to take him across on his back. At first the man was angry, saying, Do you dare ask me the holy tuck to carry you? But suddenly he paused, his eyes twinkled, and he said he would carry Robin across. When they reached the middle of the river, where the water was deepest, the friar stopped. Then with a sudden lift of his hand and heave of his shoulders, he shot Robin over his head like a sack of grain, and into the water with a mighty splash. When Robin reached the bank again, their swords flashed in the sun and met with a clash that sounded far and near. They fought for over an hour, but neither man harmed the other. Hold! shouted Robin, wiping the sweat from his brow. He thought it would be a terrible thing if he wounded this brave fellow, or was wounded himself. Will you let me blow on my bugle horn? he asked. The friar nodded and watched for what Robin's call might bring. When he saw four tall men in Lincoln Green, each with an arrow ready in his bow, they reached for a pretty silver whistle that hung with his ro rosary. He blew a loud, shrill blast, as a knight would to call a hawk, and four great shaggy hounds ran at Robin. Robin dropped his sword and leapt into a tree, then the hounds attacked the yeomen. All but Will Scarlet let their arrows fly. The dogs caught the arrows in their mouths and bit them in two. The men would certainly have been in trouble, then, if Will Scarlet had not set forth and called the dogs down. When they heard his voice, they licked his hands and barked. Wh what is this? cried the friar. Do I see young master William Gamwell here with such men? No, Friar Tuck, said the young man. I am called Will Scarlet now. And this is my uncle Robin Hood. Robin jumped down from the tree. He was surprised to find that this friar was the friend of Scarlet's that he had been that he had been seeking. The friar was more surprised to find that Master William was one of the yeomen, and that the man he had dropped in the river was Robin Hood. What do you need of me? Ha asked the friar. The day grows late, said Robin. We cannot talk here. Come back with us to Sherwood, and I will tell you as we travel. So they all departed, with the dogs at their heels. It was long past nightfall before they reached the greenwood tree.